G'day. My name is Mac Renwood and this is our first home buyer's guide produced by Heritage Media. So we're coming towards the end of the first season. We've learnt, you know, the initial steps you need to take if you're thinking about buying your first home. We've learnt how to apply for your first home buyer's grants. Um, we've learnt about finance and how you can apply for a loan. Um, we've learnt about the different markets that we could be in, the different real estate markets. And now we're looking at putting an offer in on a home. We found a property that fits all of our, you know, little boxes and things that we needed to tick and we're ready to put an offer in. So joining me today is Max Manning. Max is a real estate agent with Wiseby Heritage Real Estate and he's going to run us through the steps of when you are ready to put an offer in. So let's get into it. Max, thank you for joining me. No worries. So can you give us a bit of an insight as to where your journey in real estate started? Uh, yes, many moons ago, back in the year 2000, actually. Yep. I uh, started at an office called The Professionals at Tookley um, under Mark Gibb, who was used to work for us here. Yep. Um, started over there, then my traineeship, and then from there I went to an office in Charmhaven, Rain and Horn Charmhaven, where mm-hmm. the Sorensen building is. Yeah. yeah. And I was there for a few years. I got out of real estate around 2005 and 2006 for a couple of years and moved to Western Sydney in Pitt Town right. and got on the tools. Yep. So I was bathroom renovating and stuff like that, which yeah, was good. Right. Yep. Um, and then I, I kept coming back to the coast every weekend and I just, I loved it there, but this is where I was, you know, this was home. So yep. I thought, well, I might get back into real estate and I ended up one of the ladies at Rain and Horn Tookley got done DUI, so a, right. a position opened up and <laughs> I got slotted in and I started there and then Rain and Horn Tookley turned into Coastwide and then Darren bought Coastwide. Yep. And so we'd all sort of amalgamated and then I started here in 2000 and 2009, December right. 2009. Okay. And I've uh, been here ever since. Yeah, wow. Interesting. Yeah. So uh, today we're talking about um, where you're up to the point where you've got your finances sorted, you've found a house that you like um, and you're ready to put an offer in. Yep. So when you're looking at um, a first home, is there certain things or elements that help to label a property as like a good first home to buy? I think what you'd want to look out for is it probably has got to have good bones. Yep. I suppose you, the budget's probably going to be a bit tight, so you don't want to have to pour a lot of money into it to try and fix it up. But at the same time, you've got to buy what the budget is yep. allocating you to buy. So yep. good bones. Um, you've got to look at the area as well, where you're happy living. Yep. Um, room. It, it doesn't have to be a massive home, obviously, because it's going to be a bit of a stepping stone. So yeah. usually you're going to be there three to five years, yep. give or take, Yep. and then you're on to bigger and better. Yep. So... As long as it serves its purpose for the first couple of years, yep. um, really that's the long and short of it. Yeah, for yeah. that immediate future, if it's, yeah. it fits all that category. Yeah. And it's not going to be the perfect home, yeah. but it's going to be a home. Yep. You know, And then, as, as I said, that'll get you on to bigger and better. Yeah, right. Yeah. So once you've found that home that you think fits that category um, and you're ready to put an offering, you've gone and inspected it a couple of times and you know, you've got your finance sorted, how do you go about doing that? So you'd want to speak to the agent fairly quickly. Yep. Um, things have changed a little bit now, so you need to be doing things in writing. So yep. as far as we're concerned, you know, we get something in via text or via email or something like that just so that we uh, – there's a paper trail of it, yeah. an electronic paper trail of it, so to speak. Yep. Um, but that's the most important thing is get in touch with your agent straight away. Make sure you're, all your ducks are in a row. So you've got your pre-approval, you've got your solicitor or your conveyancer. Yep. Um, your broker's on board ready to go and, and then basically you submit your offer and go from there. The, probably the biggest thing – especially with the first home buyers yep. that I've found in my experience is the fact that the parents seem to be real estate agents, yeah. experts, you know, all that sort of stuff. No, 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 don't offer this. Yeah. What you want to do is you want to do this. And you, want, I've seen so many couples miss out on properties because the mum and dad, aunties, uncles are giving them really bad advice yep. leading into this part. Yep. So it's always, I mean, you trust your parents and you trust your family, but at yeah. the same time, you're doing this for you. Yeah, so. it's your decision. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So, so after you've um, you know, established that paper trail of putting an offer in uh, to the agent, what what happens from then? Like what happens of the part that they don't see? So 
what will usually happen is that we'll go back to the owner, have a chat to the owner about the offer, find, and we want to get as much information from the buyer as possible. So we've got as much ammunition in the gun, so yep. to speak, to try and get the deal across the line for them. Yep. So we need to know um, circumstances, yep. you know, what, what your financial situation's like, say pre-approval, you know, all that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, settlement time. Um, we take all that back to the owner and then it's basically, it's their decision. I mean, we'll put our two cents in and say, look, this is what we think or, you know, whatever the case may be, but ultimately it's their decision. But there yep. is a little bit of a negotiation process there as well. Yep. It's not every day that the first offer is accepted. Yep. So there is a little bit of to and fro and back and forth. So yep. um, that's the next part to be expected. Yep. And then once you've agreed on a price, well, then, you know, you get the paperwork started and away you go. Right. So <coughs> is every offer that's put formally forward, is that taken to the vendor? Yes. Right. Yeah. It has to be by law. By law, okay. Yeah. So even if, you know, mum and dad gave you some bad advice yeah. <laughs> and the house is on for 600000 Yep. And you, as silly as it sounds, and you offered a hundred thousand. Yeah. Legally, we still have to submit that to the owner. Yeah. So and say, hey, this is what's. That's right. Through. Look, just let you know, we've got an offer of X amount of dollars. I know it's nowhere near where we need to be, but yeah. I'm just letting you know. Yeah. We'll see where it finishes up. Right. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. <clears throat> so after you've put in that initial offer, um, and maybe say it's approved, well, that they like the um, the offer. How long does that sort of process? to kick on to the next step? How long does that take? So, this is a bit different because I suppose it depends on agency yep. and, and area and, and what I mean by, you know, South Coast might do it differently to the North Coast. Right. The Central Coast might do it differently to, you know, West, whatever the yeah, case yeah, may yeah. be. Yep. So they've all got different ways of doing it. But okay. the way that we would do it here is – we, we try to be as fairly quickly with getting back to the buyer as possible. Okay. You want to strike while the iron's hot. So if they're offering on something, yep. nine times out of ten they've probably seen yep. three, four, five different properties yeah. and there's a short list. Yep. So if the first one doesn't come off, yeah. well, then they're going to go to second and third. And if we don't have second and third, well, then you missed an opportunity. So yep. you've got to make sure, as I said, strike while the iron's hot. Yeah, right. Yeah. So at that point, if the offer's been accepted, <clears throat> do you have to pay anything – Straight off the bat as like a holding deposit or anything like that? So once your offer is accepted, there's a couple of different ways that you can do it. You can do what's called a solicitor exchange where you don't pay any yep. initial deposit. Mm-hmm. The solicitors handle the exchange, but the issue that you've got there is that the property doesn't come off the market. Right. So legally... Someone can sneak some, up. Yeah, exactly yep. right. I, yep. mean, I mean, you're still given an opportunity and, and, and you should be told exactly what's happening throughout the whole process if you go down that road. But at the same time, be aware that Mm. someone could come in with yeah. a better offer yep. and the owner is quite within their rights to accept it. Yeah, the door's and still open. Exactly. And we then legally, as I said before, have to submit that offer to the owner. Yep. You can't hold anything. And then the other way, which is the, the preferred way in this market, mm-hmm. is what's called an, an in-office exchange or an agent exchange or something like that where you pay a quarter of a percent of the purchase price or 0.25% yep. of whatever the purchase price is. And then you sign a contract. Yep. The owner signs a contract. And you go into a, a cooling off period, and that can span for five to ten business days. Yep. Yep. Okay. So when, <coughs> um, so say you're doing that solicitors exchange where the door is technically still open, is your offer confidential at all, or is it something that like, if you've said I want to put in for a six hundred thousand dollar home, and you've they've accepted five ninety five, yeah, and someone comes <coughs> in and says, well, can I offer five ninety seven? Do they are they have access to that information or is it like a it, yeah it's this is it's an interesting question as well because it, it depends on the agent right and the agency right okay I mean it's well, the biggest thing that that we see a lot of mm-hmm. out there is disclosing the price yeah I mean th- th- that is the cardinal sin as far as I'm concerned in real estate why would you yeah because you're giving the buyer an unfair advantage mm. and you're restricting the owner from getting more money because if, if they bench it at a certain price, yep. there's no way the buyer's going to pay anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but as I said before, it depends on the agency. So we don't disclose price in any way, shape or form, never have, never will. Yep. Um, but, you know, you do You've hear heard about it. Yeah, yep. you do hear about yep. it. Let's say the agent, you know, my mum bought a, a property with another agent. Yep. It was a little unit. Yep. And just to, to, to give you the, the gist of it, so... Yep. 
she had 380,000 to spend yep. on a unit. <clears throat> she went to auction. The agent come over and physically told her and said, look, if you pay 354,000 for this, it's yours. So he's disclosed. Yeah. What they the, want. What the owner wanted. Yep. The, the minimum price. Like, yep. So I think, and mum even, I think she even got it for 352. I think yeah, she said, well, I've paid 352 and. Yeah. You know, so away. she got it a couple of grand cheaper, but she was prepared to pay 380 on something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She didn't. She yep. didn't have to. Yep. So. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. So once you've had an offer <laughs> accepted um, and you start that whole exchange process calling off, um, does that mean you're locked into that property? So from the owner's perspective, yes. Yep. You're so locked you, into selling. Yeah, you yep. can't pull out. If you've signed a contract and it's dated and it's and it's under a cooling off period, the owner can't pull out. Yep. The buyer can. Yep. And they can pull out for whatever reason. So yep. if um, they change their mind, if it's a bad pest and build, if the valuation doesn't stack up, mm-hmm. whatever the case may be. So they can rescind that contract. Yep. What they do lose though is the 0.25% deposit. So right. you do forfeit that to the owner if you do pull out. And that's yep. it's kind of like a little bit of a compensation sort of thing to the owner because yeah. you're taking the property off the market. So you're yep. in a cooling off period. If someone comes in and you've got 600000 on the table that you've yep. accepted and someone comes in off you $2 million bucks, yeah, the owner can't turn around and say, I want yeah. to take the $2 yeah, million. That. Yeah. yeah. They're right. locked into that contract. Yeah, Interesting. So, yeah. Um, so when you put an offer in and you change your mind, for example, you yep. find something better or whatever the reason may be, how do you go about changing your mind? As far as re- receiving? As, as, a, yeah, as a buyer. <clears throat> so you've just gone, okay, I'm not sold on this one 100%, but here's yeah. my $600,000 offer. And then the next week or whatever, within that cooling off period, something pops up and you're like, oh, actually, yeah. I don't want to do that one. Yeah, I'd want to try and do this one. So it, it, it goes through the solicitors. Right. So you do need to let your solicitor or your conveyance to know that you you don't want to proceed with the sale anymore. Yep. They'll then send over an email in, or something in writing to the other side saying that the, just letting you know the buyer has rescinded the contract and you're liable to pay the 0.25% deposit to the vendor. Yep. That's really about it. Yeah. There's, there's not a lot too much that you need to do. It's just if you change your mind and yep. you, know, you might get buyer's remorse or you might – Yep. There's a lot of factors there, but that's really all you need to do. Yeah. So you spoke about um, pest and building, like you could potentially get a bad pest and building report and that would want you to pull out. What is a pest and building report? Why is that an important thing? Your pest and building reports are extremely important in my opinion. I think you're crazy if you don't do it, regardless of if it's a brand new home or if it's a 50-year-old home. Yep. I mean, you want to know what the bumps and bruises it's got and what work needs to be done and... I mean, they're the professionals and they go over it with a fine-tooth comb to make sure that the the property's structurally sound. Yep. You don't want to buy something that's got turn lights yep. all through it. And yep. then, you know, so it, it can create a couple of issues if you don't do it. I, I have had it done where people have said, no, nah, that's all right. Yeah. Are you sure? Yep. You know, but it's, it's their prerogative, but you really should be doing something. Yep. Yeah. So it's kind of like they're going in with a fine-tooth comb and looking at everything yeah, if you're not a builder, yeah, or a pest specialist, yeah, you can you could potentially miss if you if you don't know, and especially with first home buyers and things like that. Yeah, I mean you can get caught up in the moment, and yeah, you don't want to miss out, and all yeah. that, which is great, but at the same time, you know you got to pay the professionals to do their job. Yeah, yep. you know, so you've got peace of mind. Yeah, and the other thing is as well that sometimes an owner can provide you a pest and building report. They might get one prior to the property coming on the market. It's not a prerequisite, but it, it can happen. Yep. My advice there would be to still go and get your own pest and building report so you've got your own yeah. peace of mind. I mean, you don't know who the owner's employed. It could be their uncle best or mate, their yeah. best mate who, yep. you know, Joe Blog's building and yep. you, you don't know. Yeah. So, yeah. Absolutely. So if you're looking at like the timeline <clears> of purchasing <throat> a home, so you just found one, you put your offer in, it's been accepted, um, you're into that cooling off period. What happens after that? Like as far as like step by step. So you conveyance uh, after the cooling off period happens. What's the next sort of step? So you, you, you've done your pest and building reports. Yep. You've done your valuation. Mm-hmm. You're moving on to unconditional exchange. So the next step is then to arrange to get the balance of the deposit mm-hmm. over to the agent. Yep. To, to get into the trust account. So it could be 10%, it could be 5%. I mean, yep. that is something that is negotiated in the cooling off period between the conveyances. Yep. And that, again, 
going back to depends on your financial situation. So you might only have a 5% deposit. You might have yeah. more than 20% deposit. I mean, that's every buyer is different in that respect. Yep. Um, but you move on to unconditional exchange. So you'll pay the balance of the deposit, whatever that is. And then basically the sold signs will go up once the cooling off period expires. It could be five o'clock on a Friday afternoon. Yep. Sold signs will go up and then you move on to settlement. Yep. Whenever that is, could be a couple of weeks, could be yep. three weeks, four weeks, whatever. But the next thing after that really would be to organise your pre-settlement inspection yep. or your final inspection, whatever you like to call it. Yep. And that's just a, another go through of the property just to make sure it is as it was when you bought it. Yep. And all the features and the inclusions and all that sort of stuff are still there. Yep. Ready for you to move in. Right. Awesome. So do you have any advice for someone who is potentially up to this point? They're about to put an offer in, found some properties. Any advice for someone about to buy their first home? Um, get in now. Yep. I, I think there's a little bit of um, – movement in the market there has been for quite some time yep. um you'll probably find you might get a bargain at the moment yep market is good for a buyer uh it's good for an owner as well but yep. um we have seen prices sort of come back a little bit to what they were this time last year yep it's gone from what we call nuts to normal yep um and as i said before do it on your own accord yep you know, it's always good to get the information and the advice from mum and dad who've sold five or six properties in their lifetime, but yep. the market changes the way that you do it changes. So you've got to do it for your own, yeah, on your own and make sure that, um, you know, that you're happy with the purchase. You know, yeah. you can see yourself living there and yep. don't rush into anything, but at the same time, if the right one pops up, yep. jump on it because it might be another three, five, six weeks before you find something else. Yeah, right. Yeah. Awesome. Well, this has been super insightful. How? What's the best way for people to contact you if they like more info? Uh, so my, my mobile number is 0410 651 uh, Email manning at au, or pop into the office at Charmhaven. I'm always here, part yep. of the furniture. Nice. Yep. All right. Thanks, Max. Really Cheers. appreciate it. No worries. Cheers.